The horse was through drinking and it was time to start out again. As he rode over the dusty trail, he wondered why his friend, Sheriff Dan Weatherby, had sent for him. He had known the old sheriff for years and knew he could handle most any trouble by himself. It had to be something serious. After seven days of hard travel, the marshal entered Smithville. He could not see as it had changed any from years ago. He put his hand in his shirt pocket to make sure his badge was well hid and headed for the sheriff's office. He found a rough looking cowboy sitting at his friend's desk. Where is the sheriff, he asked. I am the sheriff now, said the man. Dan up and decided to retire and move to Houston. What can I do for you? Not wanting to alert the man to his mission there, he said, I am a friend of Dan and was passing through and thought I would drop in and say hello. Well, he is not here, said the man. Check in your gun while you're here. There are no guns allowed in town. Mm. The marshal did not like giving up his gun, but he had no choice. He hoped he could get another one from someone in town that had one hidden. Dan needed information, and the best place to get it was the saloon. He headed down the street to the Bull's Head, Bull's Horn Saloon. It seemed to be the only one in town and was crowded. Finding a table, he ordered a beer and settled back in a chair with ears open. He did not have to wait long when he heard someone ask, I wonder what they did with the sheriff. I do not know, but I saw him right out of town with one of the wrestlers, said another man. He was probably taken out and shot. Just then, an old prospector entered the saloon and looked around. Finding all the tables full, he went to the table the marshal was at and sat down. He looked at the marshal and his face lit up. Why, I know you. You're, you're Marshal Bartlett, he said. Yeah. Thank you, old scavenger. <laughs> How have you been, asked the marshal. I haven't seen you in years. I never did make a gold strike, so now I sweep off the bar and do odd jobs. It is a living. What brings you all the way out here? Hank, you are just the man I need. Is there a place where we can talk privately? I have a, <clears throat> I have a cabin up in the hills. Uh, he's, we can go there. It isn't much, but it's home to me. We can go there as not many people know about it, about the camp, and we can we will be alone. Thanks, Hank," said the marshal. "I need your help." When they arrived at the cabin, the marshal could see Hank was right. It wasn't much. There were big gaps in the side <clears throat> where boards had rotted away. The roof must leak so as, as there was part of, of it covered with a canvas. The inside was clean and neat and homey looking at it, though. Hank had the marshal sit, sit down in a rocker while he sat and airing him in a chair. Well, Marshal, it is good to see you again, said Hank. How can I help you? I got a letter from Sheriff Weatherby that there was trouble out here, but he did not say what was wrong. I overheard in the saloon that there are wrestlers in town. Also, I need you to find a dozen good men to help me put the wrestlers in jail where they belong. I also need a gun. I had to check mine in when I got to town. I can do both, said Hank. I have two pistols hanging in the bedroom. He went in the bedroom and came out with two shiny pistols and ammunition and handed them to the marshal. He looked both 
he, he looked both, both pistols over and said, these will do fine. You keep one as you may need it before this is over. Hank told the marshal that the rustlers just came into town and took it over. No one was allowed to have a gun, so they could fight back. The whole town is afraid of them, and the leaders are holed up in an old abandoned farmhouse using it for headquarters. It was decided that the marshal would dump down with Hank. In the meantime, a dozen good men were deputized to help the marshal. For several days, the wrestlers were watched around the town, and plans of attack were made. First, they went <clears throat> capture the man posing as a sheriff. Then they would use the jail to put the prisoners in. Next was the saloon where they all hung out. This would decrease their members greatly. And finally, the abandoned farmhouse where the leaders were hanging out. The day of the raid, deputies were split up into two groups, one for the jail and the other for the saloon. The marshal took out his badge and put it on. Then with five men, he headed for the sheriff's office. There were three men in the jail and saw them coming. They started to fire at the advancing deputies. One deputy was hit before they found cover and returned fire. In the meantime, gunshots could be heard coming from the saloon. People ran for cover and the streets as bullets were, uh, flew around. The fighting was fierce. Suddenly the marshal saw smoke coming out of a chimney in the jail. This gave him an idea. Grabbing an old canvas, he worked his way to the building next door. He was able to climb in onto its roof, and from there he was able to get on the jail roof. He covered the chimney opening with the canvas and then motioned for the deputies on the ground to be ready. Soon the three men came running out, coughing and rubbing their eyes. They were taken to jail and locked up. The fight at the saloon was over, too, with the capture of another six men. <coughs> When all rustlers were locked up, the marshal and deputies headed for the farmhouse. The fight there was over in minutes, as the leaders knew it was so useless to try to fight so many deputies. In the farmhouse, they found Sheriff Bartlett all tied up, but unharmed her. When the sheriff saw the marshal, he shook his hand and said, I'm glad to see you, Ted. <clears throat> I was sure you would come. The rustlers were taken to, the Houston, to Houston for trial, and the little town of Smith, Smithville gave a sigh of re relief. They were gone. They were glad the trouble was over. If you ever... If you are ever out that way, stop in and visit. You will find a warm welcome. God bless. Thank you, sir. Sorry, my eyes were giving me trouble. Got a little butter on your story. Yeah. Well, George Whiteman said three men ought to have. Arms. Three men shoot by that arms. George Washington. I guess there are empty barrels. And now they're trying to take them away. You know that. Oh, yeah. And all those guys.